Well, good afternoon. I am sitting here with the most remarkable lady that I have just had a bit of time talking with, okay. and it's Meredith Gaston, <laughs> um, an international acclaimed Australian artist, author, health coach, and speaker, and who has, you know, obviously written a lot of books, but right now she has, you know, just written another amazing book and <laughs> Meredith I'll get you to hold it up because it is exquisite <laughs> it's you know um, something that I really want you to talk about it's very centered on the heart it's called choosing love living our lives to nourish our hearts and can you begin to tell us how this all came about with your latest, Aww. your latest wonderful, <laughs> beautiful, you well, know, first touching of all, book. Caroline, I've had the most lovely time with you. It's um, we've just for those that weren't here, which actually it's just a two of us. So for all of you, we've just been sitting here eating cake, drinking tea, sitting amongst yes. flowers picked from the garden, and having yes. a beautiful time. So we um, we certainly have been in a very um, love filled gentle open-hearted space as we've caught up about life and about this book and um for that i feel really grateful thank you oh thank you because i i can't you know in phase enough how delightful it's been oh, from so the impact of walking in and being in your space and, you. and sharing your yeah the beautiful cake which i'll be sharing a photo of that later <laughs> folks <laughs> well you know i the thing that was so delightful about your first comment when when you stepped into this space is that it it was a reflection of of the book it, it reflects um the the beauty and the love and and the uh, i guess the whimsy or the in within the book and that is essentially this is my inspiration this is my studio space i'm nestled here into a beautiful garden and mm. the flowers the butterflies around me become fodder for illustration for my imagination and the music here the, oh, the 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 light the air the space it's just peaceful and beautiful and uh i'm very you know i'm i'm very inspired within this atmosphere and mm -hmm. this this book um brings together a lot of inspirations from my daily life but this is a book for everybody and it's a book about love about as the title suggests, choosing love. So, you know, we, we've heard so many things like, you know, what the world needs now is love, sweet love, and love is what makes the world go round, and all of yep. these things are incredibly true. Um, mm -hmm. What we often don't speak about is love as a choice, and love as a choice that we have in every moment. Choosing to love life, choosing to love ourselves, choosing to love each other, making loving choices. Mm -hmm. uh, is so essential for our health and happiness. It's tremendously important and yet it's something we don't speak about very often. We're so empowered in our ability to make choices in this life. In fact, our entire life stories are, are culminations of, of the choices that we've made each step of the way. And choosing love as I have written this book, as I've lived my life and as I've written this book, it's just really drawn my attention all the more to how foundational love as a choice truly is. It's available to us in every moment. It's life-changing, it's transformational, it's revolutionary. And um, more than ever, I feel that our, our world needs this message. This was a book that I pitched many moons ago. It was fortuitous that, it, you know, during the time of COVID, I feel that there's been a wake-up call. There's a, there's a wake, yes. there's a call to action, to loving action now. We've been separated from one another in many ways. Um, we have a, a, an increasingly fragmented and stressed and um, isolated world in many mm -hmm. respects. And Absolutely. even though technology allows us to connect with each other so quickly mm -hmm. um, and so instantaneously, there's a, our humanity, our human, the human element of loving connection is something that has shape shifted so drastically in the last couple of years. And yet we need, we really need the love. We really need the tenderness the compassion, the open-heartedness, and in the face of uncertainty and stress and um, and grief for many people, grief 
uh, jobs that they once loved, yeah. relationships that yes. were once available to them, places that they were yes. able to so freely visit or lifestyles or whole worlds that were available to them that have been um, closed or or aspects of life curtailed or mm. uh, I, I feel that it's a, it's an opportunity for us to come back to love and mm. to come back to ourselves to come back to each other um, with more conviction and dedication than ever before because we mm. need to feel nurtured we need to feel seen and and also within this kind of climate to cultivate optimism and faith in love and life the energy of life is so important because there are many reasons for which uh, I suppose we could be feeling crestfallen or lacklustre or losing our faith in love and life and yet if ever this is a time when that light needs to be burning very brightly for all of us collectively uh, and so this is an offering uh, to if there was well, straight certainly it's a it's an offering from my heart my imagination my learning um, and it's 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 also the tenth book that I have done in a series of books that ha that touches on emotional intelligence, well-being, and quality of life, gratitude, kindness, self-care. Um, the subject matter about which I've written in the, over the past sixteen years, it feels like it's come together in this book because love anchors everything. Yeah. Love anchors the gratitude. Love is the seed. Gratitude and kindness, joy and inspiration, and 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 at, <laughs> linking all of these things mm -hmm. together is this is the energy of love, which to me is the energy of life, and as I've written into the book, is mm -hmm. itself a reason for being. So even if we are limited in what we're able to do right now or what we feel we're able to give, love is ever available to us and just happens to be the most powerful and important energy to cultivate the most important subject to explore um, and so to me it feels timely it's timely but it's timeless as well and this is a, co a collection of essays and um, conversations with the heart um, essays makes makes it sound serious 20 chapters on love that touch on grief that touch on beauty and inspiration that touch on romance I mean it just love has so many faces it would be it wouldn't be right um, for this book to um, to be at all superficial or at all um, narrow this book I feel at least my, my, my hope was to to do love justice to honor the breadth and the depth of love um, and the seasons of love we move through in our lives uh, when we are disappointed or disheartened when we are elated and we're you know, um, we're radiant and alive when we are um, missing someone, when we are yearning for something, when we are lonely. Um, this this book touches on all of those moments and feelings and as such uh, has been tremendously rewarding and grounding um, to create and the words and the pictures come together in such a way that uh, what can't necessarily be captured in written word can be captured in the expression within a piece of art. Um, there's a synergy between the words and the pictures. Uh, there's uh, a different language, you know, the visual language it, to me is very, very strong. It's as strong as our written or spoken word and I hope that, that this has come through in the book, that the book is an experience, it's a visceral experience, um, both the art and art and words, meditations, reflections um, that all come back to this tremendously beautiful subject and the subtitle of this book, Living Our Lives to Nourish Our Hearts, is very much um, a thread that weaves its way through the entire book. So what does it mean to nourish our hearts? What does it mean to live our lives to nourish our hearts? What a courageous way of living that is and it's Many people in the past have said to me, oh, self-care and self-love, that sounds terribly self-centered and egocentric, but and I always come back to the idea of, and the knowingness of looking after ourselves as the foundation for our ability to look after others lovingly, to look after our earth lovingly. If we don't look after ourselves, what energy do we have to give and self-love, self-care? 
it's not selfish it's essential for um, an energized love filled life so living our lives to nourish our hearts in turn nourishes the lives of those with whom we spend our days nourishes our world beautifully beautifully said I just I truly you resonate to everything that you know I've obviously I've already engaged with the book and it is I don't know I can honestly say you know you've actually you've got one of your pieces behind you with <laughs> we haven't got all of it but um it is a beautiful piece here I'm just you know I've got it up now but that's you know you usually don't um keep your no. pieces but this no, is this saying. could you tell us a little bit about this well <laughs> it's so lovely you'd ask oh i don't i don't usually keep my pieces i've moved a lot you know over time i've lived yeah. in different countries and different cities and different yeah. places and yeah. and i've traveled lightly that is a value to me to be portable and um this piece i kept because it meant something to me i painted this on mm. um beautiful um italian linen and it has been primed so the actual raw it's raw beautiful raw textured linen um, and i used australian mineral paint so i had these paints mixed for me in in perth they're they're natural pigments and um i've been painting my favorite medium really is watercolor my books are all really with watercolors when i came to paint i found that i couldn't connect with the acrylic paint so well yeah. because it didn't feel um it didn't feel natural it didn't feel organic and when i'm working with my watercolors and i'm dipping my you know my brush into water and i'm using these pigments some of which have lasted me 20, you know 10 20 years tiny little pigments i've bought from my travels and around the world and um treasured them i wanted to use a paint that felt right to me and this this is it and it's the first piece i ever did i did it in about i, I can't believe i'm telling you this but honestly i don't know what happened i walked up to the canvas and five minutes later this piece was just looking at me and it's so simple of course it has nothing to do with the amount of detail but it just sort of slipped out of my fingers and to me it's this um that is so peaceful these these women and um there's the strength in there it's almost like they're what do you call them amulets like the um, yes. they've, they've got these these strong um and yet it's all in a pastel palette of course it's a very soft painting but it's softness and strength and it's togetherness and and harmony and there was something about it that I I thought oh shall I work more on it and then I just stepped back and I just stepped away completely and I thought it's just done and I haven't touched it since and I I just felt like I wanted it around me because I liked how it made me feel looking at it yeah. and then I put a, a Tasmanian oak frame around it and um and I just I, I just I call them my girls they're just my girls they're your girls <laughs> but they're beautiful again you know just like your book is and you know again it touches on the essence of love mm -hmm. and heart mm -hmm. and that's exactly what this book is really about mm -hmm. heart and i tell you folks it's, it is uh, essentially the most beautiful read and i highly recommend it now you can get this through hardy grant books it's published by um them mm -hmm. um can we get it at the books Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, and thanks to Hardy Grant, this book has been rolled out very generously and broadly. So, yep. department stores, online retailers, and um, you know, also on my own little website, um, I occasionally have signed copies available it's, there. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's easy to find. You know, if you're somebody who's savvy um, online, just tap the title in and and just see where you can find it. And I also always highly recommend independent local bookshops because to support yes, local is yes. so important. I know I love to do that and I yeah. do that at every opportunity. So, so your little local bookshop, your corner yeah. gift shop, just ask them because, if, yeah. you know. It's good to support it, them. It, I agree. It's good to support them and the books are yeah. on there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I again, it's been an enormous delight to meet you and to be Likewise, invited into Carol. your home and you. here in Brisbane in my little <laughs> hometown and I, 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 I thank you so much for you know, the time today and well, you've just, made my day, we've had yeah, the most beautiful I've had, time I have, I've had the best <laughs>
this time you've you've made my Christmas. Oh, we've had a very dainty garden tea party, and I'm sure yeah. it's the first of many. Absolutely. I'm delighted in meeting you. So Absolutely. Thank you for your time and for thank you. your genuine passion for this subject matter because it radiates from you. Oh. And just to be able to be in. Um, to be able to talk about this right now and to yeah. share it is a, is, a, is a gift for me. So thank you for your time. Oh, thank, <laughs> well, thank you again. <laughs> and, and yep, yeah, guys, I'm just going to be blasting out this book a bit. <laughs> so go and get a copy and, you know, and buy it for everybody that, you know, wants to connect with their heart right now because it's very healing. It's just, and they're, all the chapters in this really will pull you on what you need, I think, at this time in our lives. Mm. So thank you, Meredith. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>